Today is starting at the metro station and I am pumped up. I got my boy Carlos here taking us on a tour and I got my homeboy from back in the States, Todd. We're going on the metro. We're going on a city tour today, guys. All right, we're back at San Antonio station. And the other one is Occidente. Occidente. And West. So Oriente Occidente. Norte. Norte Sur. It's just they, in this city they, they don't do West or East. They do Oriente. So we're going to the east side of the city. And the Orient is the East. That's what Orient. they call it. The yeah. Orient. Yeah. yeah. That's the word in English. Orient. 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 Yeah. It means the, Yeah. It means the East. Japan, China. Tell me what we're getting ourselves into today. We're here at San Antonio. Where are we going next and where are we heading? We're, get, we're hopping onto the tram. We're getting off in Buenos Aires station. And from there, we're going to take a walk through the Buenos Aires neighborhood and Catalonia all the way to Pablo Escobar's neighborhood. The area where he built 800 houses for poor people back in the 90s and 80s. So there's like a monument and a, a mural with his picture and a tiny museum where they explain the story of that neighborhood so i i hope that this this part of the trip is fun for you guys yeah and we're gonna get into a lot of different adventures today that is one of many to come yeah. so we have a what are, how are we going to describe this like a urban culture, an urban culture adventure urban culture adventure guys so in that's medellin. what we're into today here in medellin so these are definitely different than those metro cars are these electric? Yeah, they are. They're electric? They're Last time Carlos told me we were gonna go on a one hour hike, it turned into be a two hour straight up. This is a 19 minute hike, so I'm not lying this time. <laughs> <laughs> My tour today. <laughs> but in any event, we just left the Buenos Aires station. We're headed up to, where are we headed? <laughs> <laughs> Pablo Escobar's old neighborhood. Yeah, Barrio, Esco uh, Barrio Pablo Escobar. Okay. This is the area where Pablo Escobar built about 800 houses for the poor people back in the 90s, in the early 90s, or I think late 80s. And, you know, I think this part of, the, of our tour today is very important because the city of Medellin is working on wiping off Pablo Escobar of the history of Medellin. Like negative yeah, since he's a negative influence, they are trying to just erase his story. And by do and the way they do and it is like they tore down one of his main houses in Poblado uh, called Casa Monaco uh, and now they are trying to change the name of this neighborhood they actually changed it already oh they did right but the people still call it Pablo Escobar neighborhood because I mean building 800 houses for the poor I think is I mean yeah, that's a big, that's a big lift. Yeah, I mean, that's a big lift. It's some dark background right there, but yeah. building houses for poor people. Like yeah. It was amazing. A hundred percent. That's the sign that it states that this is Pablo Escobar's name. Right? And this part, the 800 houses. Down the, down the map. We were already working in, in the houses that he built. Okay. But this would be like the center. That's the sign. They just redo it. And 
that that mural we just watched with his picture yeah was built in 1993 in in an action against the mayor of the city because he wanted to change the name of the neighborhood okay right so the neighborhood said no so the neighborhood said no even though when you look at google maps the name of the neighborhood is different but they try to keep it the way it was before pablo escobar's neighborhood yeah ¿Qué más, hermano? Oh, that's when he first built it, right there. So look, there was no roads, Todd. And, and as you can see, how the that's why I call generational houses because it starts with the first floor. First floor, right? Yeah. Oh, that's right here. That's 1988. 1988. Yeah, same That's the that's the opposition action the neighborhood did against the mayor. And they only started with Bienvenidos, welcome to Pablo Escobar uh, neighborhood. Is, is that his son now? This is with Howard, no? Yeah, that's his son now. That's the just the justice minister. Oh the one oh, when they ambushed. That was the first yes photographs. The DEA knew about Pablo Escobar because these pictures were taken at the airport in Nicaragua and those, that, that, was the, that was the first proof of Pablo Escobar. So, taking the picture in the White, the White House. the sun. That's hilarious. Why well, he was already the most wanted by the FBI. So over time, they've kind of tried to wipe Pablo, or they have effectively wiped Pablo Escobar's name from the city. And he does have deep-rooted history here. This is the only place kind of that still bears his name. And so sort of a memorial. But it's not the first time we're going to kind of get a look at his footprint or thumbprint on this city. But this is a neighborhood where he built 800 homes for the people here, which is kind of one of the things that helped keep his grip so tight on the city. Todd, see that cross up there? That's where we're going today. That's where we're going. That's it. That's it. That's it. I will walk. Again. Yeah, see, what do they call that space up on top? Like the patio? No, the space for the next uh, the next floor. Uh, Something iris, up... iris, the air. Yeah. These houses, as you, as, you, as you watch at the picture in the little museum right there, the houses start off with the first floor, right? I, I call them myself generational houses because they start off with my parents, let's say, right? And my parents have three children, and two of them stay in the neighborhood. So what my, my dad did for me was give me, he gave me the air, that's what we call it in Spanish, it's called aire, but it's the air on top of my building, so I can build my own house. So the story of this house probably is that it started off with a, with a father that gave the, two, the second and third floor to their children. And now one of their children was given the fourth floor so they can build. So that's why we call them gener generational houses, and you're going to see it all over the city. Got a good ear, come give it a bend I could listen all day till you tell it to me If I heard it before, then let me hear it again While you let it out, I could take it in When you got something to say, you can tell it to me Say what you wanna
So we came down the hill and from Buenos Aires and we landed here at the Miraflores station. And so this is a cable car ride up to a part of the city that I haven't been to. And Todd definitely hasn't been here either. Those are the houses of Pablo Escobar. Oh, they were up on the hill. Yeah. Okay, that's right. Yeah, that's Pablo Oh, so we're on the east side. Yeah. I thought we were on the west side. No, we're so we're not going up to Community Trace. No, we're going we're going to Pan de Azúcar. They overlook from that neighborhood. So the way the city tries to keep the criminality by was by building these escalators in this neighborhood we're going to later on. So we're gonna get there and you're gonna see like a similar neighborhood like this one, but they all have like escalators all the way to the top. So this this also changes the neighborhood because the neighborhood is no longer a, a, a nest of criminality. It is now a place for business. So every every house next to the escalator is a store or a restaurant. What's a blue building? That's a hospital. No, that's a school, that's a school, my God. The universe. So, like, in love with the social inclusion. There's still, there's still poverty, definitely. That's such a cool city. Right? You actually see it down, down. It's amazing. And then, even the areas. There's a lot of green space in this city too. Yep. I mean, and that's a surprising thing. I think it's just because the trees will grow anywhere, so they just need a little, little space, a little space to pop the roots through. See? It's hard to believe how straight down that is. Wait, 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 wait. I think we were supposed to go uh, turn left there and go up there. All right, guys. <laughs> we're headed up to another Mirador, another Vista. This is another quote unquote 45 minute walk the car from Carlos, which means I can see this is straight up and down. Oh my. When you come up over in the cable cars, there's no way it looks as steep as it is, like when you're down here on the ground. Oh. So cool and interesting. Let's go up to this little viewpoint right there. Then I say let's head over to Community Tracer. So Carlos is starting to have some difficulties keeping up, so I think I think we might we might max the hike out. We might max the hike out right here. We got one little more row of stairs. And then we have a nice vista. But the young guy can't keep up, so. <laughs> so 
I didn't even know there was a golf course at the end of the runway. Yep. Huge golf course. Tell everybody, everyone we know, we ain't got time for that today. Cause we got somewhere, we're about to go. Big dreams that take us far away. Here we go, we're taking off, and we know we can be stopped. Tell the stars we're coming up. Blow it up like gamma rays, free ourselves from time and space. Count it down. troubles take back control we ain't got time for that today let's close our eyes and just hold the breath all right so we have just arrived at Camino Trace and this place is a zoo. It is full of tourists right now. Okay, so the street 13, over the with all these neighborhoods back in times, used to be the most dangerous street in the whole world. In the 1980s and 90s, Comuna 13 was considered one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the world. It was run by violent drug traffickers, most notably, Pablo Escobar, who used the poor hillside barrio as a transit route in and out of the city. The neighborhood served as a stronghold for guerrillas, gangs, and paramilitary groups. But things began to change in 2002. The Colombian president launched Operation Orion, a raid on Comuna 13, with 3,000 military troops backed by helicopters. It was brutal, and it was a very controversial beginning to the change of this neighborhood. During the first week of the raid, at least 18 people were killed, 34 wounded, and almost 250 arrested in Comuna 13. The neighborhood's 100,000 residents, they were caught in the crossfire, resulting in detentions, hundreds of injuries, and even disappearances. During the following decade, the government set about to improve the Comuna. It redeveloped the brick houses and built community centers across the neighborhood. But access to the neighborhood from the city below still remained a problem. So in 2011, the government installed the Escaleras Electricas. Now I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but basically it's a set of escalators that extend up the hill 1,260 feet. 
connecting parts of the once isolated neighborhood to the city below. The escalators gave residents newfound freedom and brought about a total shift in the local mentality. Kids began to play on the streets once again and local artists felt safe enough to go out and brighten up their neighborhood. The result was the creation of one of the most colorful communas in Colombia. The area surrounding the escalators is now covered with murals and graffiti, with bright colors and street art decorating walls once riddled with bullet holes. Many murals tell the story of Communa 13 or depict local heroes. One thing's for sure, the artwork sliding by as you ride up the escalator to the top of the hill is amazing. And once you get to the top of the hill, there's a boardwalk you can look out over and see excellent views of the cities below. It's been a dramatic shift for Communa 13, and tourists now come from all over the world to ride the escalators and see the street art. But despite the improvements, Communa 13 still has some problems and remains a poor neighborhood. It has a long way to go, but at least the future is looking very bright for this very colorful neighborhood. My Colombian cosmopolitan. <laughs> Todd got served his dinner first. What do you got there, Todd? I got brown rice, french fries, uh, plantain, coleslaw, and two pieces of chicken. Wow, it's a big plate. This way for yours. Yours is going to be big. Wow, look at this, guys. So I got the whole fried fish. You know I like that. It's a little top, tilapia, a little arroz, ensalada, patacones, patacones. And, and some fish soup. And some fish soup. Ah, oh. and this was about I think seven dollars. Todd's was five dollars. What'd you get, Carlos? My, I got some soup. That's all you got. Sancochado, but it's a huge soup. We got sancocho. Sancocho. So sancocho is the soup. So what does it have in it? I don't know meat. <laughs> Me and potatoes? Me and potatoes. Beans? No, no beans. And my stomach, cow, cow's stomach. Oh, tripe. Ah, oh, gross. Gross. So that's about 25 bucks. Big meal for three people, couple drinks. Nice view. 100,000, beautiful view. Yeah, that'd be $75. Thank you. Gracias. So Kurt and Todd and Carlos have headed out for an adventure today to one of Medellin's famous neighborhoods, Comuna 13. So I'm fixing to take my first adventure by myself. And it starts with getting down these stairs. Well, this is a bit of a bummer. <laughs> the bakery's closed. 
If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!